The Mediterranean has been the center of so much of the world's history that it's simply incredible. To name a few, this region has seen the Romans, Greeks, Egyptians, Jews, Carthaginians, Arabs, Spanish, Byzantines, French, Italians, Turks, Persians, and Hittites all develop along its shores. It has been a connecting force for almost all of history, and its importance to history cannot be overstated. The surprising thing is that the Mediterranean almost never existed. Six million years ago, the Straits of Gibraltar closed, thus meaning the Mediterranean closed, which resulted in the evaporation of much of the water, thus destroying the sea. This was called the Mycenaean Crisis. However, 5.3 million years ago, the Straits reopened, causing the Zanclean Flood, which flooded the Mediterranean once again. However, this brings up the question, what if the Straits of Gibraltar never did open up and the Mediterranean was dry? What would the world be like? What would borders be like? What would culture be like? That is the question of this alternate history. So let's look at the geography of this new region. Obviously the Mediterranean would be dry, with hypersaline lakes. The lands would be salt flats, like those of Utah, Nevada, or the Kalahari. This is what happens to seas when they dry up and there isn't enough water to fill them. The Mediterranean creates a source of water for the partial arid Mediterranean climate that hugs the shores of the sea. This means without the sea, these regions would just become desert. Entire nations like Italy, Greece, Turkey, Israel, Syria, and parts of France and Spain would be consumed by the desert. Practically the entire region would become one massive extension of the Sahara, with the desert only ending at the Alps. The only part in this region that would be fine would be the western parts of North Africa and Iberia, which would get some water off the Atlantic to keep them habitable. The Nile would flow into a special salt lake in between what in our timeline is Crete and Egypt. From there it would be evaporated by the cruel heat, thus preventing it from becoming too large. There would be several lakes in the Mediterranean that would be incredibly salty, where the water had not yet evaporated. The Black Sea would exist independently from the Mediterranean, since it was created by the flow of the melting glaciers going south. However, it would be much smaller. Until around 8,000 years ago, the Black Sea was cut off from the Mediterranean and was much smaller. Then the dam broke at the Dardanelles and more than doubled its size. That would never happen in this timeline, and the Black Sea would be around half the size. The settlement of humanity across the world wouldn't be that different. Most modern theories say that humans got to Europe via the Middle East or even Central Asia, which means that the human settlement of Europe and the extinction of the Neanderthals wouldn't be that different. Civilization would still rise in the Tigris and the Euphrates in Mesopotamia, which is not related to the Mediterranean, there would still be the same reasons for the rise of civilization in that region. I'm guessing there's going to be enough water in the mountains of Turkey from Russia, the Black Sea, and the Persian Gulf combined to keep those rivers flowing through Iraq. However, Mesopotamia would be the furthest west habitable land could be. Further west in Syria, Turkey, and the Levant, it would just be pure desert. The Nile would still see the rise of Egypt. The forced irrigation around the river would still force people to work together under a single government and develop civilization. However, the bottomlands around the mouth of the Nile River would be salty flatlands that would be uninhabitable, thus meaning that Egypt wouldn't have the Nile's mouth, which is where the majority of Egypt's population and resources come from. There would also be no coast to connect the Egyptians with the rest of the world. This would effectively retard Egypt's growth on many different levels. Getting rid of the Mediterranean and the Delta would effectively turn Egypt into Sudan, which has the Nile but neither of the others. This would prevent Egypt from becoming a major world civilization. No offense, Sudan, you've made some nice pyramids, but you're not a world civilization that has played a decisive role in history. This would be Egypt's role in this timeline, a minor nation trying to survive around the banks of the River Nile. As Mesopotamian civilization would expand, it wouldn't move west. Egypt and Mesopotamia would be geopolitically cut off by the desert. They would trade but never compete and fight. The desert would mean that nations like the Hittites and Phoenicians would never exist. Also, with Israel being a desert, there never would have been the rise of Judaism and the Abrahamic religions, like Christianity and Islam. Mesopotamian civilization would still collapse and be conquered by the Persians. The dominant culture of the region would be Persian, with Babylonian undertones. The dominant religion without Islam would be Zoroastrianism, Persia's fire-worshipping religion. There would of course be no Mediterranean-based civilizations like the Romans, Greek, Phoenicians, etc. This has so many effects on history, it's completely ridiculous and would completely derail history. On the northern side of the desert would be northern Europe, that would still be wet from the rains coming off the North Atlantic. Without the Romans, the Celts would remain the dominant group here. Without Roman interference, the Celts would take longer to do it, but would develop their own civilization based out of northern Europe. This civilization would be spread to other peoples like the Germans and the Slavs, and would become this timeline's version of western civilization. 
The lack of classical civilizations being completely cut off from the Near East would result in civilization being much less developed in the West. Without connection to the outside world, Europe would be a lot like China and East Asia, which also developed completely independently from the outside world. This resulted in Chinese civilization being not very expansionist, and being culturally isolationist, since it never had to deal with outside cultures. Europe would probably never reach this level of insularity, since it would likely be unable to unite into a single nation, with Britain and Scandinavia being cut off, but would still not be very linked to the outside world. Frankly, China would actually be the dominant world culture of this timeline. With the Middle East and Europe having enormous bites taken out of them, China would be left as the main world culture and the most developed and powerful region on Earth. The world in this timeline would be much less developed, with the world being split into many different and distantly connected regions, between Northern Europe, Persia, India, and China all going their own directions. Without the Greeks, Romans, and probably Egyptians and Arabs, the world would be a much poorer and less developed place. The world in general would probably be a thousand or at least hundreds of years behind what it was in our timeline in technology and development. What if all test? Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that video, please comment, subscribe, support me on Patreon, and stay tuned for future videos. If you like that video and you like playing with water in this region, you might like my video about what if the Sahara was wet and remained a fertile grassland. Or you might like my video about what if the Nile never existed and Egypt never came to be. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.